some other individuals that will join us as well this time. We cannot, uh, with Darini's back, we cannot really at this point. Welcome back, Darin. Is it right for the next session? Hi, thank you. Let's go. Right. Um, Mr. Bai for nearly worst of a lot of this chapter um, or this section of the chapter deals with um, or gives you information that is good to know, but you're not going to um, necessarily be assessed on um, on table 14.3 topics that salespeople would just like to discuss more with the sales managers. This is just nice to know because um, it adds. It, it, it provides additional um, backing for the theories that we have um, thus far in the chapter discussed. Um, it is very clear that your problems in your job, um, setting unrealistic targets, these kind of things are very high on, on the list of what um, salespeople want to discuss with their sales managers. Um, physical contact. Um, Okay, again, that's just an interesting um, a table. It's not something that you have to um, prepare nice. for assessment, but um, just having a look at that particular table now, also there's a lot of those positives that at this point is um, not possible for us to do because of the um, social distancing regulations that uh, that's enforced on us. Um, but people, they are um, in this particular table, um, positive and negatives, positive and negative experiences. Um, if somebody slaps you, if somebody pushes you, those are physical negative, um, um, physical negative uh, gestures where um, a good handshake or a pat on the back and say, well done, those are normally very positive um, physical um, reactions. And then Next to them, you can see the psychological ones. Uh, it's good to praise somebody to tell them that they've done well and that you appreciate that they what they have done. Um, giving a good smile, which is probably not that easy nowadays with our masks that we wear. I saw somebody who was in one of the rugby players on the weekend who, no, it's one of the tennis players at, at um, the French Open now. His mask was actually um, the image of his face. So. So he had a mask on, but it looked as so if he was talking and his mouth was open, you can see his teeth and everything. So that was um, a nice spin on it. But um, yes, uh, that's probably the thing that I missed the most initially in, 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 in the lockdown period. And that's the fact that um, especially people, especially with people with glasses, um, because if you had a mask on wearing glasses, your glasses are usually fogged up. Mm -hmm. So you cannot really see in somebody's eyes if they were smiling or not. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually only hear if they, if they smile. So I, do, I, I did miss a lot of smiles during lockdown well, because that was a downhill for me. <laughs> yeah, some, some, some people, when they laugh, you hear them before you actually see them. So. Um, <laughs> Right, just some positive and negative gestures, um, people, that uh, goes a long way to motivate you to do better. If somebody, you know you did well. Um, the other evening I was watching America's Got Talent as well, and the one guy after he performed, the judge actually, um, we all noticed that you guys, you don't really have me to tell you how good you are, or how good this performance was, because obviously that's the kind of a statement that you make if it was really a good performance. And the guy turned around and says, no, I actually do need you to tell me. Um, and yes, we, we thrive on, on, on getting compliments. Uh, and therefore, that is a very positive gesture to keep people motivated. But you cannot just continue complimenting and praising the whole time. You have to, you have to ensure that you can exchange that into a reward, which is um, of value to um, that particular employee. 
We've spoken about leadership a bit, and we realized that, um, and, and uh, we've already concluded that um, the leaders or a strong leader, be it as the CEO of the company or the head of the um, 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 sales department or your sales manager or your direct supervisor, whatever level in the business you find yourself on, um, the person above you um, leads the people below him or her. Um, you can be a leader and people sometimes see leaders just as leaders right at the top. Leaders right at the top, yes, but it has to filter down as well on each management level that you find. Um, whoever is in responsible for a group of people be, um, 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 uh, below him or her uh, also needs to show leadership. Um, it's not just the CEO and the directors at the top who need to show leadership. Um, it does, however, um, motivation provides them um, um, a movement while the leadership actually supplies the direction. We cannot um, actually um, we cannot actually express it in a in a better fashion than that. What motivates you provides the movement for you to move forward, but the leadership supply the direction because we can all be motivated to and psyched up to the point where we walk off a cliff and we all die. But that's where the leadership comes in. You have to provide the motivation, which will get everybody going and excited, but you need to get them moving in the right direction. Okay, um, otherwise, um, the end result is not pretty. In the, um, and if we go down the organogram, for instance, the sales manager is the person who um, show leadership by um, focusing on forming a very good relationship with the people right below them. In other words, that sales manager might have three assistant managers. So he has a very good or she has a very good relationship with those, um, encouraging them to copy that with the people, the salespeople in the sales teams that they are um, responsible for. So it is something that comes, um, leadership comes from the, from the top down, but everybody actually is a leader um, in his or uh, her own um, um, position. If you see yourself as a leader, even if you are part of a team of three or four people, um, what you would do is going to display that. I'd much rather have a couple of leaders in a team um, than just one person supposedly by the title that he or she has inherited um, is now perceived to be the leader. Um, too many leaders, however, in a group can also be counterproductive mm -hmm. um, because they all have very strong personalities. They're not always going to want to lead in the same direction. Um, and that is probably the only or one of the greatest challenges um, for leaders to encourage people to take ownership and to lead, but then also to ensure that um, a clear direction is provided uh, where everybody um, is working towards. Otherwise, you're welcome to join another company and lead there. Um, if so that's why it's nice to have different types of leaders in my family, because then you get like this sympathetic one and then this strong headed one. Yeah. The authoritative one, analytical one. And not too many, one. not too many Sagittarians in one group. Yeah. Because they. Gemini. <laughs> Gemini. <laughs> right. Why is it important that we do training? I think we've touched on many of these, but let's just um, summarize it in, 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 on, on one slide. If you train your staff continuously, it will enhance their skills levels. Sometimes it is required because of the work um, situation or the job expectations that change that you have to um, upskill them. Um, every time I said it, I think a year ago, when as a result of 
me not wanting to get a new phone because there was a month left on my contract. I wanted to wait till I can upgrade or a month left till upgrade um, from a Samsung. And I then got this from somebody who says, listen, this phone's lying in the cupboard. He's not, I'm not using it. And I said, but this is an iPhone. And I was not an iPhone person. I promise you on the weekend, I was going through my old phone because there was some um, data still on there, which is obviously it was a Samsung, you know, just the one previous to this current one. I couldn't work the menu. It was like, all right. What and, is this alien? and I think once you have, once you've converted to the Apple menu, which is difficult if you come from any other um, phone. Uh, once you get used to it, man, it's, it's, it's actually much better than most others. So I I'm, I'm, the I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a converted iPhone user now, yes. Um, but um, yeah, every time you make a change like that, somebody has to teach you. Somebody has to tell you, okay, this is what you have to do. This is where you're going to find it. And as I said, we're going through that transition now with, with, um, with, with the migration to Stadia. Um, there will be changes for all of us. It's not just changes for the students, it's changes for all of us. Hopefully, if you train, if it's done properly, if it's not just, oh, you know, we have to do this again. Um, the training must have value to the people who are, it's, it, um, um, who are receiving the training. Sometimes, some businesses can overtrain their staff as well. They put too much emphasis on the training component that people have said, but it's almost as if we did this last week and now we're doing it different. So there's, you get that. You get people who also who wants to be so much in charge that they change things just so they can actually train people again on the new way of doing things. But you usually, if it's, if it's intended well, if it's communicated well, if it's structured properly, then it has the impact of improving the motivation of the people receiving the training, because that's one of the main intentions. Um, it proves your self-confidence. Yes, all of a sudden you're doing things that you, uh, I tell you what, I was using Moodle and I was aware of a lot of the functions that, um, that, that is available that, but, but wasn't used. And you know, if you do something on a daily basis, you get better at it. And then you find this functions that you haven't used, but it makes your life easier. Or it's, we definitely, I definitely grew a great deal during, um, during lockdown as to what I'm able to do. Um, first, some of it, we, uh, some of we, some of it, we didn't have any choice because we, you had to do it in a different way. Um, but generally um if generally if um if training is done it improves your own self-confidence because you are improving skills that um you're improving skills that you battled with or that it wasn't really um strong skills uh, because we don't always focus on improving the skills that we are already good at to ensure that we're better at that you also have to improve the ones that you are battling with Je kan nie net sê, maar luister nie, ach, jy sê, weet jy, ek is nou nie goed in wiskunde nie. Jy gaan wiskunde moet hier kom, maak jy op wat te level nie, om om jy matrix uit te rekaar te kry. So you've got to make a plan to improve on those things that you are struggling with as well. Uh, and often a 5% increase in in, in, a, in, a, in a skill that you battled with is, is more valuable than a 50% increase in something you were good at already. Um, Reduce cost? Yeah, of course. If, if you trained and, and, and you're at that um, knife's edge of your of your skill, then um, you are more efficient. And if you're more efficient, then you're more productive. And it's just a win-win for everybody uh, because that immediately also impacts on your um, improved self-esteem. Um, and companies happy because the bottom line, while we're in business, goes up. Fewer complaints. Yeah, because um, not might not necessarily be, depending on what training was done, um, fewer complaints probably, and remember this is focused on the staff and the employees. That is staff training, employee training. So there are fewer complaints about, I wasn't, I wasn't sure how this has to be done. Now I know how it's done, so I'm not complaining about it anymore. Why 
do people complain and what do people complain about? Small petty things. What's the main reason? Why? why if it's small and petty, then it shouldn't be significant in the first place. So why bother about it? Because I've got nothing better to do. Sarah? It's also kind of depends on like why you're doing a specific job. Some people do it just for income, just to do sure. something. Some people do it just for the CV. Yes. Some people just want to do the very minimum for a certain extent. Or they will take the extra like courses or skills, but also add it to their CV and experience. So it depends. And also, like, business could also make it optional to do the courses, it's like free or whatever. Mm. But then they can also make it like an incentive. Like, if you do this, you will stand up with a chance to get that up like a promotion or something. Sure. So I think it's trying to find a balance that's important, like most things in life. Um, people usually complain about things that they don't have enough information on. Um, once they are informed, and that's usually done through education, which is a form of training. Um, if, if I don't know better, if somebody says to me, listen, and I did it the other day, I'm at a, a case in point, I haven't fortunately been in a situation where I had to test my, um, what I was taught, um, how my knowledge improved. I'm not good with reptiles. I hate snakes. Um, I have changed to the point where I say I don't hate snakes anymore. I'm less scared of snakes. Because um, a friend of mine said to me, listen, here's an app. It's an app that you have on your phone because... Um, if you're confronted with a situation like that, usually what happens, we panic and we don't know because we don't know. Um, the snake also doesn't know. He's not going to attack you, um, but you don't know he's not going to attack you. So the fact is we don't speak the same language. So the language that we can um, help is ourselves with is to understand um, the different species better and understand the well, understand the species better and be able to have a uh, app that you can actually quickly just point at it. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's far, far enough away. And it identifies it as poisonous or not. That immediately doesn't mean that I'm less uh, uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm a bit more at ease. Uh, because why are people scared of snakes? People are scared of snakes because they think if they get bitten, they can die. It doesn't happen with all um that all snakes are, are, are poisonous. So <laughs> the fact is, and unfortunately, we cannot just remove every, all the snakes because then it bugs up the ecosystem and all of a sudden we'll have more other animals that will become a new threat to, to, to I say, um, civilization because um, they were here before us. But um, the fact of the matter is, um, I've become more knowledgeable. I'm less fearful. I'm still scared of them. Okay, I'm not all of a sudden going to you know, go out and look for snakes in the bush because I'm excited. And, no, no, no. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm probably still, my first reaction will still be a bit more anxious, but um, than, than, or anxious than most of us are when we are confronted with such. But I'm, I've got more peace of mind as to um, where I was. Um, so, People will complain about things usually that are either wrong because they've experienced, they've had a bad experience. Okay. So from a sales point of view, that we know that we have to in, train our staff to be better in handling people's complaints mm -hmm. and not just unless wonderful, wonderful um, YouTube clips on um, uh, available that, um, that and the office the, the, the series on, on Netflix, I think, is, is one of those who are amazing in bringing that into a sort of a, um, a comedy series. Um, it's very real, but, um, but it's also very funny. Um, and, and I think quite often dealing with complaints um, has to do with the manner in which you do it. Um, just um, for instance, you you go back to the shop, you bought something, and you realize, oh my goodness, uh, no. 
nothing wrong with it. You return it, it's still in packaging and, and then the person there says to you, but this is not, I don't deal with this. Um, you have to go onto our website and then contact a consultant and that consultant will contact you and arrange an appointment for you to come in. Okay, fine. So that's your policy. I'm quite happy with that. And that's the procedure. But I'm here now. And I am here now because I went on and no consultant got back to me. And then I decided I'd rather go to the shop. So somebody helps me here. No, it's nobody here because all, all our consultants work online. That's the, see, that's, it's, 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 it's the, that specific scenario. Um, you have an unhappy customer that as hasn't got a complaint or it could be a broken item for that matter and they want it replaced or refunded or repaired um that customer is going to leave there very unhappy i promise you whatever he or she is going to do online um, is not going to be good uh, or that person there could just take action as it's all our um, um all our consultants work online um and I believe that you have experienced the process, so you know exactly what to do. Uh, I'm very sorry that nobody got back to you. Please leave this item with me. I will get the particular consultant to follow up with you. Then they've taken action. And the problem hasn't gone away because the, the, the customer hasn't got a new or, or replaced uh, or repaired um, product or a refund, but they will stop complaining and purely because action was taken. And that's all they want. That's all they want. It's the manner in which it's done. Yesterday I went um, into the same spa and I bought some um, things for the house because I knew I was going to be on campus the whole day and the boys are going to be at home and obviously look after themselves because they'll break down the house if there's nothing, but they'll also make themselves meals if there's something. So I got to the front and I usually pay my groceries. I keep some items separate. I've got a cart that I use for specific items. And when I do my grocery shopping at the supermarket, I use my cat consumers um, smart card. Uh, because then, you know, it's just, you've got a certain limit. It's the end of the month, the limit's gone. Then, you know, you, you pay that amount and your limit is open again. That's just, it's more convenient than carrying cash and stuff like that. So that's what I did. I got to the front of the, um, I got to the top and everything was packed in June and what, in the bags. I gave him my card and he says, oh, it's a problem. I said, why is the problem? And I've already um, logged it as a cash sale. I said, well, so what's the problem? Here's my card. This is what I'm going to pay. And I don't have cash with me. So what are we going to do now? Um, no, so um, um, I'll have to get the supervisor. <laughs> But I think we can use one of those mobile uh, machines. I said, that's fine, not a problem. Supervisor comes and says, no, you can't use the mobile one. Okay, now already I'm getting frustrated. Okay, so what do we do? She had to, the supervisor, credit every single item, right? Print the receipt. I haven't, no money has been exchanged. I have to sign, obviously, so it, as a, it's a counter to whatever she's already printed, which is the receipt of yeah. the, that goes into their file. So they know that nobody stole this, those, that money. Um, unpack the bags, scan it again, put it in the bag, and then I've got to swipe my card. Okay, just because that person didn't ask me, how are you going to pay, sir? Because they usually do. And if I stand with my card in my hand like this, especially if you ask me for my smart shopper card, and I've given you a smart shopper card, which you swipe already because that's just logging my reward points, not actually paying for anything, then you can see my other card in my hand and you assume I'm going to pay with a card. Um, anyway, the manner in which that lady scanned it again and put it in the bag, you could see. Who's the frustrated one? I'm the frustrated one. I didn't make the mistake. Yeah. And, and that's very often... Um, the manner in which something is resolved. The manager could say, Sir, you know what, I'm very sorry for that. Um, year and year, what's the solution? Even if I would have used my debit card to pay for the, for the groceries. 
if the manager or the supervisor in a proper manner express some way that they want to help me but i got the feeling from the start you know what this is a loss because the supervisor has to now um, use her code and credit everything because the cashier can't do that and the cashier is frustrated because she has to scan it again and repack it again but none of that is my problem so very often the way in which a problem is resolved um, is resolved in such a manner that it becomes the problem of the people who didn't create the problem and i think that's where we become frustrated so training people in dealing with complaints is, is one of the most important aspects uh, i believe in business because you, you can you can create and the intention of any salespeople is to make a sale to make a sale in such a way that the people come back and buy again and eventually don't even think where they're going they're going straight back to that shop because they are loyal to that um, particular brand or shop so you can create loyal customers in that way but you can also create customers by dealing with complaints properly the reverse however is damaging if you don't do it well mm -hmm. that's why one of the aspects that's most commonly dealt with in training especially in retail is customer management and how to deal with complaints because i mean there's places especially now there's restaurants where we've gone and we literally say we are never going to the one piece ever again. We go to other one piece, other town, but never to the one in Armonis because they are always bad. And they'll say like online, it closes at what, like seven or six or whatever. They close at five because they don't want to work anymore. But on the doors, in like the, the, the embossed or whatever, it says X to seven o'clock. And yeah. I think we all have experiences like this almost on a continuous basis. And that's an indication to me that there's a great deal of room for improvement still left in how it's done. It starts with the education. It starts with, um, I think in education, I mean, don't go study for something and then get a qualification. And it means that you just tell people how to do things differently. Um, I did when I before I left because obviously I was frustrated and I was really I was on the way to class and I thought you know what it's something I still wanted to do and prepare but now I can't do it because my time has been stolen now um, but because my time has been stolen I was there um, I am not going to be late for class but I'm I won't be able to do what I've planned so that's gone I might as well use the opportunity in a different manner so I said to her you know what there are different ways in which you could have actually handled the situation. That's not be, me being um, difficult now. It's me helping you. So please see it in that light. You could have done this, done this, this, and this, and this. And next time it happens, or next time to prevent something like this, so please consider this, this, and this. I'm not telling you how to do your job. I'm just sharing information with you. Use it, don't use it. Simple as that. So sometimes education just means exposing people to different ways of doing it or better ways of doing it in a nice manner not in an um, authoritative manner where i mean she's already got a supervisor who's going to obviously at the end of the day have a talk to her um and um, really didn't need anybody anything else um or anybody else to also still tell her or him what to do um so yeah, but we can all small little things, and that's fine. The other day, I said to one of them, "You know what? It's a great idea if you smile occasionally. Okay, it's actually not that bad to smile." And then next time I was there, the person smiled, um, and that's all. I mean, and that's contagious. We know that. I, I was smiling for the rest of the day, but I wasn't sure why. <laughs> the fact is that um, um, it, it is contagious. Yes. Even if you have a mask, people can still see if you smile or not. I know you're smiling at the moment, Darren. <laughs> but then the thing is that that is, yeah, that is small little things that make a big difference. 
a training program and what can be included in a training program uh, or should be included in a training program of a company. And I think that we're probably at the end of this chapter, if I'm correct, um, is that firstly, you have to be trained in the products of the company. There's no, I know for instance, and there's two better ways. Let's 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 stay with the with the supermarket retail um, um, examples. You walk in into a pick and pay or a spa, any of the re retail shops. You're looking for something, you can't really find it, um, and often it's because you're new to that shop, because people are not loyal to a particular shop or that loyal to particular. So they go wherever. I'm no exception. I go to the one that's closest. But uh, sometimes you want to on the way to work or after work you want to go elsewhere. And you're going to a new shop and not sure where everything is. Um, and you see the people dressed in the uniform after, and you ask, them, please, do you know where, where will I find this? There's nothing more frustrating to me as, oh, I don't know, so no, sorry. Um, because that's not the right answer, regardless. The right answer would it be, even if you don't know, is to, so I'm not sure, but um, let's, let's, let's walk around and see. That will be fine. Why? I find it, it probably takes the same time if I, um, that I would have taken to find it myself, but now that person knows as well where to find it next time. Somebody has a similar, um, similar request. Alternatively, um, you have the opposites where you're looking up and down the aisles and you see this says rice and cereals and that's all you walk down and you, um, ask for something that should be in that aisle and there's no indication that it's out of stock or not being stocked and you ask somebody there <coughs> and they will tell you but um no 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 i only work with this i actually i'm just packing these racks i'm not working in cereals you're working for the company you've got to know the products and what that we mean is no the layout of the business if it's a retail setup for instance no way to go well i don't know sir but you know what that lady over there she's been working here for 20 years i mean i'm pretty sure she will know that helps me as well okay so um it's it's not difficult but it starts with knowing what business you're in that's what it says when it comes to the company's product know what business you're in um you're not going to work for a car company if you are not into cars I know more often nowadays we find people in jobs that they do because they are just thankful to actually get an income. But even then, if I'm grateful enough to get a job in a time that 200 million people have lost their jobs in three months, I would go out of my way to find out what this business is about. Um, so I don't look like a fool. Um, and then all the first one out on his bike when they start retrenching again. What else do your competitors do? Very interesting. You don't have to spy on them. Hey, Johnny, you know, I'll pay you extra. Um, don't come in tomorrow. Just go in your casuals and then check with those guys at pick and pay do. Okay. No. Nowadays, people, everybody does the same almost because, I mean, they sell the same product. So just maybe steal some ideas with your eyes. But at least know what your competitors are up to. You don't want to be surprised. Um, selling procedure and techniques. I think we've explained it now. I mean, how to be better at identifying the need of a customer so you don't waste your time and their time by trying to sell them something that they don't need or can't afford. Um, handling objections. Work organization um, and report preparation. That's the admin part. That's the part that most of us hate. We all want to do the job, but we, oh, now I have to put this in the report. That takes three hours. I could have made five more sales in that three hours. People, it's, somebody has to know <coughs> what happened. It's not just filing reports on incidents and stuff like that. It's what capture the activities that's been done. Usually with the, with the uh, fortunately with the Salesforce automation uh, systems nowadays, what you do is logged um, anyway. So it is easier for the manager to control and see if it actually did happen or not. 
but um, somebody still needs to capture that data. Okay, so make sure that um, you're not scared of admin because it's part of the job. Um, and it's probably an area that a lot of people, oh, we're going on an admin course again, or oh, admin training. It's the attitude, change the attitude towards the subject that you're being trained on. Relationship management, especially I think when you're dealing with um, key accounts, um, how to um, how to not just establish that relationship, but how to nurture and grow that relationship is, is also important that you are trained in that. Um, and you have to know what the company's policies are. If you go back and you um, uh, with an item that you're unhappy with, um, oh, you know, so mm -mm, no, sorry, we don't have an exchange policy on that. Uh, these things happen. You know what? You open the carton of milk, it's going to go sour at some point. No, not if I put it in my fridge and if it says long life milk, uh, it shouldn't happen. Okay, so um, also um, make sure that you know what your return policies are. Know as a salesperson what your leverage is, what your range is in which you can uh, maybe negotiate discounts um, if a customer asks you about that. Um, and Okay, Tarina is coming back. Uh, let's just see. Right. Um, and Tarina is back. Can it also Tarina? I see it's unmute up in the stadium. Is it with you? Have a No. Great. Okay. My laptop is not good. Your laptop is good. Okay, when I. <laughs> yeah. Ek het specifiek nou vandag gedink, ek gaan eerder net die netwerkkabel werk om te kyk of die internet nie meer stabiel gaan wees nie en apparently it does help a great deal, so from our side it's fine. Ok, nee, ons het net bekommerd geraak yeah. en in die slaap geraak en nou die derde kopie koffie. Right, um, um, jy het een vraag gesel, Sandra? Speel my pen? Maar jy moet op so'n manier speel, ek denk jy wil een vraag vraag nie. Ah, okay. It's fine. It's a good Relationship management is just done, and then obviously know the company's policy and objectives. It's very important that you get um, what your PSG to lot and what all the bereikers on the street to track. There's nothing that um, um, that is that that comes across unprofessional or as unprofessional as, as an employee not knowing what the company's policy is. And it has to be reminded. I can swear, I can try it's cook and was the ultimate the dung with the cook it in, I could try it, like of a gear truck fight. Um I prop with you for cooks means uh um in the person said for me, yeah yeah me it's fine man you need to do it in two start if any honor me a senior for cooks means to waste up say uh nee 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 I'll still die nee so, ek sou nog meer kwaad gewees het, as ek gegaan het tot by die punt waar hy vir my gesteer het, en dan sê hy vir my daar, sorry, dis nie ons policy nie. En dan sal ek my doos gegooi het, um, en waarschijnlijk die item gekoop het ook. Right, so, um, mense, ons is in die einde van hierdie hoofstuk, en ek sluit af hierdie hoofstuk met a, um, met a wat snaampie, met a image van, ek dink wat nogal baie relevant is vir ons, um, as jy in hierdie bedrijf is, en jy het het al gehad, ook in dalk, het jy het al in vorige um, vraag of toetsen of taken gehad, waar al gesê is dat die, the time of, time is very, very um, valuable, not just for you as the salesperson, but also for the client and the customer, because your time is limited to, um, uh, uh, is, you have only so many hours, and such a big window um, of time that you can contact your customers. You can't find somebody at seven o'clock tonight and expect him to be very chirpy and happy. Um, I think we spoke about it in the week. This, uh, the same um, company that we spoke about earlier in the week has called me three times since after I've already told them I'm not interested. Um, so yes, this particular, this particular slide to finish off the chapter, refers to you 
uh, entering into sales or realizing or should realize that when you go into sales that you have to be switched on all the time not to miss opportunities it doesn't mean that your job is going to require you to work 24 hours a day so in other words grind while other people are sleeping learn um, while they are partying and then you live the life that they are dreaming about Okay, there are 5 million motivational quotes that you could probably put in here. Um, the fact of the matter is, the people who um, work harder, um, eventually work smarter. Um, and that's why they are more successful. And there's no greater motivation than that. Hard work at the end of the day is the best um, motivation that um, is most often consistently rewarded. Okay, different companies have different policies, but um, nothing really, um, nothing really beats hard work. To close the chapter on motivation, um, or that closes the chapter on motivation, we have some time left. So I'm going to just to um, Tarin, you don't have to, um, um, you don't have to leave us. Uh, just bear with me for a couple of seconds because I'm going to um, I'm going to just change the screen um, and for the students in class as well we'll take a bit of a breather those who want to go um, and answer nature's call or get a glass of water or whatever you're more than welcome to I'm going to just change to um, to a new screen which is the next chapter which is our chapter on organization and uh compensation radio i can not to feel what it's saying i can not get to feel what it's doing i can not feel so a bit of an intro here um come as krijg ook dit ook vir die online amper sê ek mense maar dit's eintlik net daarin um kie dat kie ons gaan hy screen change na aan die hoofstuk toe Tarina, op hierdie stadium het jy enige vraag um, oor die skedule en oor volgende week sy taak en die, um, en die, en die interview presentation? Ja, ek wil net vraag, aangezien ek mis nou op Zoom is, uh, yes. hoe gaan dit vir die interview werk? Ok. Um, en hoe moet ons dit noteer, as ek dit kan so sê? Ok, wat jy gaan doen is die volgende. Jy gaan van my gaan na... Um, Ek gaan gauw vinnig een skermpie met jou share. Um, ek wil nie daai oukie gauw... Kom ek share gauw vinnig, net voor so'n minuut met jou um, dit. Ons het het gister gauw vinnig gedoen. Um, maar jou vraag is relevant, so ek het nog nie gister een sessie um, op Moodle gelaai as een video nie. Maar um, ek kan vir jou wees wat ons... Um, ek kan vir jou wees wat ons gedoen het, daai specifieke screen gaan ek gauw wil share, share screen, en waar is hy nou een, is nou nie daar, okie, is daar nou wat te soek, radio, um, moet jylle gevindig ook weer, um, Tarin, jy was nie gister hier nie, jy het net een video gesien, um, maar ons gaan gevindig aan die, Tarin, wat ek op die, kan, kan jy sien op die skerm, daar is ons een um, rubriek, Okay. die rubriek waar daar is, is vir vraag nummer 6. Dit gaan oor um, die essay wat jylle moet skryf. Dit is gedoen net om vir jylle aan, aandering te geef van, um, van uh, hoe gaan die dergpunte saamgestel word? Hoeveel krijg jy vir introduction? How many, how many marks do you get for, for your conclusion? How many marks for the essay itself? Uh, we also did the rubriek, which is there on that page on the screen right now. Um, which basically gives you the rubric for your interview. In other words, how are you going to get your 12 marks? Um, are you prepared? Are, um, uh, is, is it, is your, are, are your questions related to, um, to the specific uh, case study? In other words, um, demonstrate your knowledge of the, of the specific topic. Uh, and then also your enthusiasm. And then on the third page, what we've done is we have, I have listed, and there you can see it on the screen now, you can see the procedure, how things will be happening next week. Because the majority of the students are probably going to 
be online and not in class. I will separate the two groups, and that's why I've chosen um, the double period, this, um, the previous one and this one for the session. Um, I will um, send out reminders to everybody beforehand just to indicate to me who's going to be here and who's going to be online so I can prepare accordingly for, um, for um, uh, the, the two sessions. I don't want students who are not in a particular group or who are in class to also uh, sit here and, and, and play with their fingers while we are dealing with the group online and also the reverse. The students in class don't want to sit and watch um, um, a Zoom session where students are interviewing each other. But basically what will happen is that uh, it, it will happen online or it can happen in class. It's a student's preference and we will break up into groups where one person will always assume the role of the candidate that's being interviewed and the others will be the interviewing panel. So in your preparation, as it says there as well um, in the instructions, you will prepare five questions with possible answers as part of your script that you will include in your assignment, which is question seven. And out of those questions, you are going to be asking a candidate a question. And why five questions? Because if there are five students, each of you will be a candidate and will receive five questions. And each of you will be asking five questions because um, the other people will then, um, will roles will reverse and they will become candidates. So every single student will be on the panel of interviewers, interviewers um, and also will be a candidate that will be interviewed. Okay. Um, so it's quite simple, follow those instructions, but more than that, go on to Moodle where it says assignments and where F4 is assignment two, there's an additional PDF, which are these three pages, there are four pages that I've showed you now. Okay, so it is on Moodle um, um, already as a PDF, I've just shown it on the screen so you can, uh, because uh, you've asked a question related to that. Okay, is that okay with you? Yes, thank you, sir. Okay, good. Right, let's uh, stop sharing that screen and let's jump to, oh my goodness, another screen, which is where now? Uh, you know, the, uh, PowerPoint, not that one. No, yes, it is. Okie dokie. Um, that's... We want to share a screen and we want to share the screen on chapter 15, which we will just briefly give you an introduction to. Um, and there we go. Organization and compensation. Now, on middelijk as jy kyk na die eerste, um, die eerste diagram, dan denk jy, oh my goodness, uh, this looks like um, invasion of the spiders or whatever. It's just People, basically, in a nutshell, this document, this diagram, represents four different organizational structures. On your um, right-hand side of the slide, we have listed those four um, instruct, um, organizational structures. Um, and in the following slides, we look at each of these individual ones. All I'm going to do today, and this is where I'm going to finish today, is I'm going to just link those on the right hand side with the diagram on the left hand side and briefly explain to you how it, what it means. Somebody asked me yesterday for an assignment that they have to do. I think it's the one that's due tomorrow, economics. Uh, organogram. Oh, business, management. business management. Organogram is what you see in your images. That basically gives you a, a, a picture of who's at the top, who's on the next management level, and the next, and the next. These are, <coughs> excuse me, these are different organizational structures, but all these, A at the top, that's B, that is C, and right at the bottom is D, um, are forms of um, a business structure. They vary and they are different. We will look at each of them individually, where the one at the bottom is an account size structure. Okay. 
and we'll explain later on exactly what that means. And we've got your industry-based structure, which is the one second from the bottom. And then we will have your um, product specialization, specialization structure, as well as the one right at the top, the geographical structure, the one that's most popular because this reflects businesses that have, um, for instance, uh, offices or um, shops or factories in different regions um, throughout a particular area in South Africa, for instance. Uh, it could be, <clears throat> let's say it's pick and pay. They've got the, and, and remember, this is not just a, this is not the entire business structure. The subject is sales and operations. So we're dealing with sales. So the operational structure reflects to the sales component of a business. In a case where it has a geographical structure, you will see that we've got the sales director right at the top. Then we have different regions because it's a geographical structure. You will have region one, region two, region three, and they all have regional sales managers. That regional sales manager that was, that's written there actually should be under number one and number three as well. So each of those, um, each of those spider webs reflect a different area, a different region. Within a region, we will have different areas. Okay. Northern suburbs is part of the bigger Cape Metropole, which is part of the bigger Western Cape. So the Western Cape would be the region, the area would be the metropole, and then you even get um, a subdivision of each area based on southern suburbs and northern suburbs, for instance, and maybe Somerset Western Strand and those areas. And then in each of those, <coughs> excuse me, in each of those, they will have sales teams and sales people. Those are the ones right at the bottom. I think you get the idea because this is what our organogram is about, is to give you a line of communication. Um, who is at the top, who's at the bottom, who's at different management levels um, for you, um, or obviously to have a sort of a, a visual idea of what your career path might look or what a career path might, path might, might look like, but also um, from a management point of view to uh, give you an indication of how the business structure or how the business is structured to cover a specific um, uh, geographical area in this case. Um, I'm not going to go into greater detail with all of these right now. Uh, when I see you guys again on uh, Wednesday next week, I think, right? Yeah, we've got Wednesday morning, next Wednesday morning, we will finish with this chapter. We will finish with this chapter um and we will do our interviews um and our practical or, or practical demo slash interview for your assignment to um next thursday um right i think we've reached the end of the road for today um just a reminder the fortunate ones who are actually here will know it the ones who are not here either online or in class will not know that the class test three will be done tomorrow. It's an online course. You can do it anytime from 12 o'clock tonight to tomorrow evening, whatever. Okay. You can do it while you're watching the Sharks beat the Lions in the rugby. You can do it while you're prying or whatever. Um, the fact of the matter is it's available the whole of tomorrow and not today, as it says on the schedule. Um, I will post an announcement this afternoon as well to just remind those who have not joined us in the last three sessions. Okay. Tarin, je op Moodle is daar skedile um, en alles wat ons vandag en gister gedoen het sal uh, sy video's gaan opgelaai word, maar jy gaan hierdie dokumente oor jou assignment daar kan kry en ook die sessies wat uh, ons vandag gezoom het. Enige vraag van jylle twee in die klas, Tarin en Sandra, niks nie. Tarin, enige vraag van jou? Nee, dankie. Oké, okay, maar dan kan jullie gaan rustig wees voor die volgende periode begin, of wanneer jullie ook alweer klaar zit. Um, dan gaan ze als ons volgende week, gaan hier in Noorwegen.